Hello and welcome to The Hearing. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And before we get to this week's album, uh, I just want to mention, for the record, that we are absolutely 100% in, in support of the protests, Black Lives Matter. Also, since this is our first episode in June, I want to wish everybody a happy Pride. By the way, for those who don't know, Pride marks the anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, which really ignited the gay rights movement. I just thought I'd put that out there. Anyway, without any further ado, on to this week's album, which is from 1998, Into the Electric Castle by Arion. Arion is a progressive rock, progressive metal project, home by Dutch composer, multi-instrumentalist, and record produce, producer Arian Anthony Lucasen. Each Arian, each Arian album tells a different story, but all with the exception of Actual Fantasy, the second album, and The Theory of Everything, the second to most recent album, take place in the same universe. Um, Lucasen's solo album Lost, Lost in the New Real, is also set in the Arian universe. Um, Lucasen writes all of the music and lyrics, um, sings and plays most of the instruments um, on the albums, and he brings in um, soloists, keyboard and guitar soloists, um, to play stuff that he can't play um, because it, you know it's not in his style. Um, also, his most regular contributor uh, is Ed Warby, who I think has played on all but one Arian album. Uh, Into the Electric Castle is the third Arian album uh, and the second to take place in the Arian universe. <clears throat> Its predecessor being Actual Fantasy, the album follows eight characters from different locations in dif- different periods in time, each voiced by a- each voiced by a different singer, who inexplicably find themselves in a strange place, where they must follow a mysterious voice and reach the electric castle in order to survive and escape the ordeal. The characters were all influenced by B movie characters, and thus are a bit over the top, which explains a lot of the album when I saw that. I'm trying to think of uh, some of of all the B movie characters they use, actually. Well, they're they're kind of in, in that, and I think that mean they mean that they're kind of you know caricatures. Yeah, oh, definitely they're um, caricatures. <laughs> also, while all the music was written by uh, Lucasen, um, and he wrote most of the lyrics, uh, singers Peter Daltrey, Jay Van Fagel, Fish, and Annika Van Giersberger co-wrote some of the lyrics for their characters. Um, Into the Electric Castle was released on October 31st, 1998 on Transmission Records, produced by Lucas and, and features. This is going to take a while. Um, yeah. Ari and Anthony Lucasen, all electric and acoustic guitars, mandolin, bass, mini moog, mellotron, and keyboards. Yes, there's mellotron on the album. Um, Ed Warby on drums. Uh, Roland Baker on Hammonds. I love that they brought a guy in just to play Hammond organs. <laughs> <laughs> um, Robbie Valentine, all pianos, synth solo on Isis and Osiris Part One, Let the Journey Begin, Amazing Flight Part One, Amazing Flight in Space, and the ta- and the Tower of Hope, uh, Mellotron on the Mirror Maze Part One, Into the Mirror Maze, um, Erno Ola, apologies for any mispronunciations, a lot of the names are Dutch, uh, on violin, Taka Koistra on cellos, Jack Pisters on sitar. Renee Merkelbach, since solos on The Decision Tree Were Alive and Evil Evolution, Harpsichord on Valley of the Queens, Clive Nolan, since solos on Amazing Flight Part 3, Flying Colors, Ta- uh, Tone Schirpenziel, since solos on Cosmic Fusion Part 3, The Passing of an Eagle, Tice Van Leer, flute solos on Amazing Flight Part 2, Flying Colors, Time Beyond Time, Valley of the Queens, and Electric Castle, by the way, Tice Van Leer from Focus, if you remember Hocus Pocus. Hmm. Um, everybody's uh, heard Hocus Pocus. You'd know it if you heard it. Um, and on to the vocalists. And I have looked up pronunciations for most of these. Um, Edwin Baller as the Roman. Sharon, Dan, Sharon Den Adel as the Indian. Jay Van Feglen as the Barbarian. Fish as the Highlander. Annika Van Giersberger as the Egyptian. Anthony Arian Anthony Lucasen as the hippie, Edward Reekers as the future man, Damien Wilson as Robert Plant, I mean the knight, <laughs> Robert Westerholt and jo- George Ustrick on as death, and Peter Daltrey as the voice, as far as I could tell, no relation to Roger. Um, reminder, I don't edit any songs into our episodes for copyright reasons, but down in the description... And if you're listening to this on YouTube and on our blog at johnscotto.com, you'll find links to Into the Electric Castle on Spotify and YouTube so you can follow along if you'd like. 
before we get to the tracks, I want to mention that there are live versions of several of these songs on YouTube from a performance, um, fairly recent one, with John Delancey playing Forever, the voice. Huh. And, and a very heavily rewritten version of Forever. Um, they're kind of fun. On to, perfect. On to track one, Welcome to the New Dimension. This is the I spoke. Get the, I get the feeling they were rewriting uh, Forever as the album even went on because when this this track, it's very much like the Days of Future Past, you know. So much of this reminds me of Days of Future Past. <laughs> the way the, the, the verse there, he's speaking it and everything. And by the end of the album, he does not keep this verse. <laughs> no. Um, this is just his introduction. Um, he, yeah. I, he says at one point, welcome to the cranial vistas of psychogenesis. <laughs> so 70s sci-fi. And I think that also means it's all in their heads. That's what I was wondering, too. Um, Later, he says, I am the vocal manifestations of your eternal dreams. Um, so I think right. you know, they, they aren't physically transported to somewhere. Um, because, and this is a spoiler for later on in the actual story, not the story of the album, the actual epic multi... They've gotten into this in recent albums. Um, but Forever's planet is underwater. Okay. It's a water planet. So they could. So wait a minute. There's more story after this, uh, but it's not with the same. It's all with the exception. Let's see. It's, um, uh, the first album, Arion, the Final Experiment. This one, um, Universal Migrator One, Universal Migrator Two, um, the one with a binary title translates to Y, um, and the Source. There's six, I think. Yes, six albums. A seventh coming up. And one of our Lucas and Solo albums. So eight albums in this universe. Oh, huh. all right. So, I mean, the, the speaking voice, obviously, I think they're going for Richard O'Brien. Okay. Could have been an influence. Yeah. I was very much expecting a, you know, say, you know, good hello to Oblivion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bye to all this. Um, love the kind of creepy sound effects in the beginning. Um, it's very much like uh, Dogs or One of These Days yeah. uh, by Pink Floyd. There's a very Richard Wright keyboard riff that comes in midway that I love. There is a lot of Pink Floyd on this album. Yeah, like yeah. Not, not um, even just a specific time of Pink Floyd, but like from beginning to end, like Sid Barrett to even Division Bell yeah, yeah. you get on this. Um, and because Lucasen plays all the guitar solos, he is very Gilmer influenced. And Future Man sounds a lot like Rick Wright in, in his, okay. his vocals. I'm, all I've heard of Rick Wright, I think, is his bit on time. Um, yeah. But I also loved um, the nuclear portals of the electric castle. Does it get now, movie movie? <laughs> I had thought that I think when, when you originally gave this to me like 15 years ago or whatever it was 2005 or, i think 17 years sure, ago it was before you been. moved at the end of five 2005 so um and uh i had assumed the electric castle was like the name that the primitives you know gave this ship you know that they see mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like oh wait a minute the aliens calling it the electric castle yeah. it's called the electric castle he oh. was influenced by B movies. You know, it's it's not meant to be that serious. Yeah. Um on to track two, Isis and Osiris. This is my favorite. This is like the epic of the of the album. Um it's and it's got let's see f uh five parts. Um Let the Journey Begin, in the Hall of Isis and Osiris, Strange Constellations, uh and Reprise, sorry, four parts. Um, starting off with Let the Journey Begin, very folky, um, nice contrast from this electronic opening with this, you know, Gilmore-ish guitar solo. Um, nice to hear some mandolin. I, um, yeah, I felt like it was kind of a, 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 just some throat clearing kind of, you know, they're getting, they're, they're starting to get us into this still. Yeah. We're still in intro mode here and let it, let the journey begin. Well, yeah, this is, this is where we finally hear the the the, ca the characters the, the people who've been kidnapped effectively um so we start off with fish and his accent really fits it in fact i think they they amped up the scottish oh definitely yeah. and i was wondering why until i heard i think it was the the deals they in hand 
Yeah, I, I think I think if he hadn't, and I think I, I really make the discovery a little while later. Oh, the Roman. The Roman voice isn't very much different from the Highlander, so if they hadn't scot- scotched it up, yeah. you really wouldn't have been able to have told the two apart. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. <laughs> um, and also, I, I speaking of voices being too similar, the Indian and the Egyptian, the two women. Right, there's no telling them apart. I think I've heard the album several times, and I've been listening to it insistently for two weeks, and now I think I can hear a difference, but I'm not sure. I, I think it's one of the flaws of the album actually like i think they could have really done like a single album with fewer characters and and it might or they could have stuck with this double album and had characters from different places and times well they do because well the problem is do they really i mean (laughs) we've got we've got eight guys right Mm -hmm. well actually six guys two ladies yeah they're, they're the two the two non-europeans the other six although i'm assuming future man is from england too i don't no, know no. everybody's don't... dutch except for fish and damien wilson the knight well where they're for the characters from the, oh, knight the characters is... oh characters the, the characters um, right yeah the, the they're you know, like the ladies are dutch but they're playing the part of the indian yeah the characters the um i i'm confused about the indian because i always assumed asian indian could be native american right they they uh, i thought with the sitar that yeah that they there's were a great sitar solo. that she was that she was in but that's the only sitar solo there they, i mean so, i don't know yeah but anyway you have six european dudes um a barbarian and a highlander which i mean a highlander is pretty much just a barbarian not from germany <laughs> yeah and and the barbarian is a viking well, of course, later. right. Northern European, you know, Viking, mm-hmm. you know, Germanic tribe kind of thing. Uh, the Roman, which could have existed in the Barbarian's timeline True. or the Highlander's timeline. Mm-hmm. And then the Arthurian knight. Who was who, fictional because Arthur, uh, Arthur was fictional. Right. <laughs> and then, of course, the hippie, I think, definitely had to have been British. No, he, that's well, the, of the character, probably. Very Beals. Right, um, he was he was David Bowie or Sid Barrett, yeah, depending. And the future man. That's true. He was Distant also future. John Lennon, the hippie, uh, in one song. Yeah. But in the future man, I'm not sure, but I'm I'm assuming he was British too. Or, so well, I'm, I would assume. I mean, he sounds very British, but he's Dutch. But um, anyway, all of all of these characters, though, pretty much. Well, six of the eight characters European. all come from Europe. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, did did the aliens not? travel to other places hmm. <laughs> so i mean if you want to do other characters you know you do a samurai the barbarian really should have been an outlaw from the west anyway the way he was talking about riding into towns and you know <laughs> think hmm. that could have been easy we'll, we'll, we'll get to that we, that's the next song we'll pull that up um but i did like when you get to the next section hall of osiris isis and osiris how the electric guitar riff comes in and it just mirrors the mandolin riff yeah, this part. is where it kicks, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they 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 shove the show tune aspect aside, mm-hmm. and uh, we get the the it, Roman and make this great sitar solo and a slide guitar solo. And I gotta say, the Roman is probably is one of my favorite vocalists on the record. At Evan Um I, I think it might be my favorite um, because fish, I would say fish normally, but but you know, fish was a little underused. I, I agree. I, I think Fish was definitely underused, which is kind of weird. I guess maybe they didn't have them long hmm. yeah. to work with. But this next section goes back and forth between uh, the first parts, um, the Highlander basically being very pessimistic and saying, we're all going to die. And yeah. then the Egyptian coming in and saying, no, this has been foretold. And, you know, what, well, that was the Indian saying this has been foretold. And the, you know, the Indian the Egyptian saying, you know, we're going to this is we've reached the afterlife. Um, and then we get the Roman and the, uh, no, the Roman and the Egyptian going back and forth. The Roman saying, you know, we're doomed. This is the jaws of Orcus, the Roman hell. Yeah. And the Egyptian saying, no, we've been chosen to enter the great hall. Um, so we get those contrasts of their, all their initial perceptions of where they are. I think they use that for pretty much that. That's the only way you can distinguish the characters is the mythology that he's 
mm-hmm. throwing out there. Yeah. You know, if you hear someone talking about the Knights of Round or Merlin, you well, know not, it's the knight. You can easily tell the knight because he sounds like just like Robert Plant. That's true. It, it, it took a little bit, but then I realized, oh, yeah, the knight's doing the Robert Plant. The only ones, I mean, granted, I'm more, more familiar with the album, but the only two I have trouble with are the Indian and the Egyptian. I the Barbarians do with Sammy Hagar. Interesting. Okay. Um, which is because I love Javon Feigland's vocal on this vocals on this, but yeah, it is very Sammy Hagar. Um, on part three, strange constellations, constellations. Um, it's just the spoken part by fish. It's kind of free time and talking about how he can't see the sky. He can't see the constellations. So he doesn't, how do they know where they're going to go? If they can't see the constellations and they can't see the homes they're supposed to climb. Thing here. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's fish doing a spoken word part when we talked yeah. about that last time. Yeah. Um, and then we get a nice long synth solo. Into, uh, I love this. <clears throat> yeah, into reprise, which is just let the journey begin. That you know, um, reprised. Um, fish basically saying we're all dead. <laughs> In fact, I thought I think I thought fish was dead at this point. <laughs> no, he did. He tries in track six. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then we get some nice sound effects at the end. Um, That's kind of another problem I have with the story of like, wait, what? <laughs> He's dead now? Okay. Yeah. What happened? On to track oh. three, Amazing Flight. <laughs> this was a close second to my fa- my favorite. Um, I, the line, darkness will lead to light, color will bleed into the night. So nights and whites end. <laughs> um, now, totally, I'm not sure if it really fits with what he's trying to do here you know Uh, like this is supposed to be a flight in through space well it's not actually a flight they're they're on the wherever this planet imaginary planet is in their dream um i don't know why they called it an amazing flight in space but i think that's more of the the, for the hippie um then we get to the second part amazing but the first part in the song it's it's after the spoken part so i can intro um amazing flight in space um, I loved the low be gone at the end of Forever's part. Um, wow. Cause the, oh, yeah. You know, he's speaking in his normal voice, very British, very upper crusty, and then there's this low kind of croaked be gone. Um, I loved the kind of finger-picked guitar when the groove starts coming in. And the the groove and the vocal, Javon Feiglin's vocal on this is just so, it's a great kind of funk, 70s funk groove, funk rock. Um, and it reminded me of every D and D barbarian I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, kind of that that hard drinking barbarian, you know, the D and D style barbarian, which is what he is. Like I said, it would have been better if he was like an outlaw or you know a Western guy. I think I, I like it as the barbarian because it, it's not the actual barbarian. You know, you got to divorce it from the historical versions. Well, I mean, even as D&D goes, I don't know if I really got Barbarian from him all that much. Maybe it's the ones I've seen that are, are kind of, you know, very um, very into the pleasures of the flesh, I'll say. I mean, that's also what was weird about this. All the swordsmen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, just the three. And no samurai. Mm. <laughs> um, but I love Javon Feiglin's vocal in this. Um uh, although I have to wonder why the hippie was double tracked. Why is the hippie David Bowie? <laughs> well, it's it, Arian Lucasen comes in as the hippie. Um, it's this very typical '60s vocal, but double tracked. I think it's because Arian doesn't particularly like his own voice. Yeah, it's kind of like Hackett and a lot of his early stuff too. Mm-hmm. A lot of this reminded me of solo Hackett, where he's you know his puttering around with his voice <laughs> he's, he's very self-conscious <laughs> about, his, about his voice so he kind of tries to hide it a bit but i like the contrast between um that double tracked kind of soft vocal that arian does and the just aggressive loud um 70s very 70s vocal that javon Feiglin does um and it's really just the barbarian boasting about yeah. what he's done um then we get this amazing organ solo um, and the barbarian just kind of trails off. And then we get this mostly instrumental section for Star Dance. I was going to say, are we in Star Dance now or Flying Colors? It's hard to determine well, where. Star Dance is the Indian kind of singing that wordless part over the guitar. Oh. Video. And then we get these kind of flangy synth parts. I like the mix of guitars and synths. I'm yeah. not sure about the flute, though. I mean, I love the flute. Know. 
<laughs> yeah, it was nice when it came all together. That's when we get into flying colors is when the guitar and the flute kind of trade off. Yeah. Um, Love that part. Um, I got to check out more uh, Focus. We should need to review a Focus album at some point. Um, but I loved all the flute on this album. Especially it trades off with the guitar at one point, trades off with the synth. Um, the piano and acoustic guitar go back and forth. And then they just kind of get back to the initial riff. Track four, Time Beyond Time. This is really the future man's introduction. Um, where he's basically saying, uh, of everything he's experienced in his world, He's never seen anything like what's in this dream world. Right. Um, and like when it started, you know, first, you know, it's kind of very moody blues or yeah. early Bowie or Kansas kind of feel to it. Um, and I was, this is the first album I've ever like followed along with lyrics in hand. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of worried how this was going to turn out because I saw a lot of combined uh, vocals, yeah. you know, a lot of different characters singing lines. I was like, is this going to be Les Mis? <laughs> it does get a bit musical theater at points. But I think they stuck the landing. I, I was, it was, well, it's a, that, I, I spoke about this with Mrs. Scotto after listening to this first time. There's a fine line in prog rock, between prog rock and, and show tunes, yeah. you know, and the yeah. musical theater. In and fact, when you bring why, in nine vocalists, you risk that line even more. It, it's why they made The Lamb Lies Down on, broadway mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah they they were actually just Fuck it, we're gonna do a musical kind of <laughs> right, thing right, right. you know <laughs> but th this one opens up with some nice dream like a, a, a guitar lead guitar um and the verses is just a feature man basically saying he's seen a lot in his world and i think he's describing his world in those verses yeah um and, but he's never seen what's in front of him right now um and then we get the knight and the Roman trying to figure out where they are. And the Roman, you know, I, basically saying, I don't understand what I'm seeing. And then the knight constantly talking about Avalon. Right. <laughs> and when I saw the thing about B-movies, I kind of had to relax a little bit because I was getting super nitpicky. He's, he's kind he's, of a useless character, the knight. He is yeah. probably the least useful one here. Um, he's talking about how he's on this quest for the grail on Avalon. Right. It's been a minute since I've read any Arthur, but the Grail wasn't on Avalon. Our Avalon is where Arthur basically went to die. Yeah. Um, so that kind of annoyed me uh, until I saw it was all B-movie stuff and I was like, okay, I can let that slide. Oh, watery tart flinging scimitars that he's no way to run a democracy. <laughs> I like to think of him as, as Lancelot. <laughs> Uh, and then we get another flute solo, and, and it ends nicely with this kind of round with the, th the three of them singing their individual right. parts. And they, they pulled this off. This is where I was a little nervous about seeing the lyrics. Like, what am I me, in yeah. for? Are we going to see the, the, the black and red flag and the barricades? But you also have three amazing vocalists. I mean, Robert Plant Impression aside, they all have amazing voices. Um, on to track five, The Decision Tree. This one's a little iffy for me. Yeah, not a uh, fan of this one. Forever says one of them has to die. And this it turns into this duet between the Barbarian and the Highlander. Where it the Highlander's does, saying... It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you know, the Highlander says, it's not going to be me, I'm not going to die. What about this one who's been complaining the whole time? Right. And, you know, the Highlander talks, basically boasts about what he's done in his life, but he's still kind of pessimistic. And then everybody comes in on this very this big anthemic chorus about how, you know, they'll survive. They're still alive. Um, Which it doesn't make any sense either. They were just yeah. told one of them has to die. Yeah. If it, we're we're alive. Mm -hmm. but, and I, then I it, it, it. It's, it's just very folky and upbeat. It's just a eh, nice it's kind too of Boston for me. Yeah. Nice kind of <laughs> Dennis de Young sense solo. That I have it for in my notes. The head to key solo is very sticks. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get into a longer synth and guitar duel that gets better and a lot heavier. Um, and these two tracks are a bit of a weak spot for me. Uh, it lulls a bit because we get. I, to... yeah, I think we're in this middle portion for yeah. me where it, uh, I, I, uh, yeah. Um, track six, Tunnel of Light. This is the weakest one for me. Um, this is where the Highlander gives up. Um, I have 
I describe the music as seventies folk rock Coke commercial. Right. The lyrics are are meh, but you know, I kind of like their voices at least. Yeah. You know. Um, and everybody's basically saying that they think they're in heaven. Um, this is probably one of the catchiest songs on the album, Tunnel of Light. Yeah. Um, it's the one I find myself like thinking back to like after listening to it. Interesting. Whether I want to or not. Because a lot of it has been in my head and this one never is. Um, <laughs> I actually looked up a translation for the Egyptians part. Um, oh, Ra- it's Helio- just like their mythology. Yeah. yeah it's Ra Heliopolis Ka Anente. Um, basically, from what I could find, it's she's asking Ra the sun god who who who, uh, who lives in Heliopolis to guide her soul or her ka through the underworld and um, yeah. music gets repetitive it's just kind of there for me um pretty skippable not bad just skippable um on to track seven across the rainbow bridge <laughs> They go full spinal tap here. Yeah, yeah. This is just <laughs> arena rock. <laughs> I like it's the night Jack Black. Yeah, it's it starts with this guitar arpeggio. Well, Forever's voice actually at the beginning is it starts getting lower, which yeah. I like, and more electronic. Um and then this guitar arpeggio comes in that is so hair metal. Yes. And and the night is talking about this lost love. Doing this straight up Robert Plant impression. It is very tenacious D now that you mention it. Oh yeah. <laughs> the, I was looking to find the pick of destiny. <laughs> yeah. Um and then the chorus comes in, it is just it's the Roman just pure arena rock. And then uh, I when the hippie came in, I was gonna I'm writing you know, oh the hippies kinda sounded like Sid Barrett. And then he actually gets to the Eider down line. <laughs> I yeah, like, I, I oh. had a feeling that was ripped off from somewhere. <laughs> that is totally Sid Barrett. Yeah, they um, they used that on uh, you know on um, Piper at the Gates of Dawn, and uh, I think they even reused the word on uh, metal. Speaking of metal, the part where the hippie comes in is when the song really goes kind of metal, which is weird. Oh. I was so metal, M E D D L E. Oh, well, yeah. but the, the song goes <laughs> kind of metal, industrial M-E-T-A-L. metal at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. And then they bring the hippie in, which is weird because well, they, they they had to bring the hippie in because he was talking about colors and the rainbow bridge. And yeah, we need the yes. rainbow bridge from this <laughs> rainbow tripping bridge. hippie's perspective. Yeah, and yes, you have to go over all the fucking colors. Yeah. Um. <laughs> And then there's a spoken part from Forever, the voice. It's his name is Forever. I'm just going to call him Forever. Yeah, um, yeah. Forever comes in with a spoken part that reminds me so much of Carnival 9. Yeah, a lot of this album reminded me of Carnival 9. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I mean, the same premise about humans being yeah. used for amusement. Mm-hmm. And then the, it ends with um, the knight and the Romans duetting on this you know run run the the past is gone it cannot be undone part they both sound like klaus Mina <laughs> from the scorpions yeah oh yeah definitely it, it just amused me um I mean, this scene... song, though, is where i envisioned a small stonehenge and little people <laughs> dancing around yeah. in front of it, it. it is full final tap um I, I you know I'm, I'm kind of surprised uh, Ed Warby survived it. Um, <laughs> on to track eight, the Garden of Emotions. Um, this is another spoken part straight out of Knights and White Seven. Yeah. Uh, part one in the Garden of Emotions starts very mellow and kind of dramatic, with the hippie thinking he's tripping, and the Egyptian getting impatient for you know to be to move on to the afterlife. Right, I'm you know, I'm getting back into it here. Uh, well, though, I mean, it's yeah, I think I would have liked this better if the hippie was better. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I kind of think you, you mentioned the night was useless to me. The hippie and the Indian are kind of pointless. Ah, oh, yeah, well, they need to be written more for them, I think. Yeah, you know, and I, I think, think they, they didn't give them enough. Yeah, Shannon Della Danadel was underused. And I think Arian just wanted to give himself a part, and he is kind of a hippie. Like most of the other characters have, you know, 
a song where they talk about themselves yeah. and their story. Right. The Egyptian gets kind of that. Yeah. But the the Indian doesn't get shit. No. no. She gets a <laughs> That's swan why we don't even song know which Indian she is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the hippie just takes bits and pieces here and there to talk about tripping. He gets a yeah. little bit reflective later. Um, and then, you know, so we have you know, the hippie think going on about how he might be trippy, thinks he's tripping, and the, the Egyptian wanting to move on to the afterlife. And then it goes kind of metal. And the Roman and Barbarian argue about who's in charge. Right. And then the Indian warns them with what is probably my favorite part in the song, part of the, one of my favorite parts of the album. And voices in the sky will cause the soul to die. With this oh, great yeah, kind of rolling keyboard part and these metal stabs. I'm, and I can't for the life of me think of the, the new wave thing that she's going for with it, but it, it's it's pretty damn cool. Yeah, yeah. Just love that keyboard part. Um, yeah. And then we get these proggy organ instant solo. Um, and then on to part three, the aggression factor. And it's this choral part with everybody trading off lines about how they're assessing the situation. And the future man kind of takes the lead um, about how they, they have to just weather it through and act as a team if they're going to survive it. Um, I love the sort of polyrhythms of the part and how everything was a little syncopated and off time. Um, and then the um, Egyptian kind of reprises her earlier part leading into track nine, Valley of the Queens. This is her last song. It's very slow acoustic with this lead synth, and she's basically just giving up. Yeah. Um, it's almost a suicide note. Well, right. That That's what's so strange about this is, you know, they're, they're talking about people die, have to die in this. So first, he makes it sound like if they don't follow or, or obey his words, they're going to die. Mm -hmm. But instead, they wind up just like, oh, you know, I think I'm just going to die. And that's it. Well, the the well, she's the only she's the second to die. I think, yeah, she's yeah. The second. I think so. It's yes. hard to keep track. She's the second. Um, Fish, the Highlander, was dead from go because he just gave he he never tried. Right. I don't understand any of that. Yeah, because he's it's like right after he boasts about oh, I'm not going to die, you're not going to kill me. Yeah, oh, maybe he, I will die. I'm going to die. Yeah. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> the the Egyptian was going on about, you know, how much longer do I have to wait, you know, to get into the, the hall of Isis and Osiris. And now she's basically given up and it's done. Um, gotta say, I like this one. Um, it gets me kind of emotional um, because of the, just the despair in it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I did like both of her vocal performances, honestly. I wish she had more. And I, I love they... the melody. And the harmonies. Granted, it's all Annika von Giersberger. I, I wish they'd given one of the women, at least, something that wasn't a ballad, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, Although, I guess the, the voices in the sky wasn't really a ballad. But, no. But, I mean, she, that yeah. was just, like, her one line in the song, you know? Yeah. They could have used more, definitely. She, she has a song later. Again, it's another pointless death, but... It's kind of a sausage fest, this. Though. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a very red and fair. Very much. Know, album. Um, <laughs> speaking of, on to track 10, the Castle Hall. Um, great, creepy sound effects in the beginning. Um, kind of a radio effect on the guitar when it comes in, which I liked. Yes. Uh, I, I, I know since they finally reached the electric uh, castle awesome. on this, uh, I said, is this is like the Star Trek, the motion picture of albums. <laughs> and there, it's this mix of rock and electronic, which is interesting. Um, because the, it has this loud guitar, heavy riff, and then the keyboards come in on the verses. And we get a very low vocal part from the barbarian. Love the low end of his voice. Right. The, that's If I didn't have the lyrics, I'd had no idea that that was the barbarian. Mm -hmm. You can't yeah. do characters and change their voice for no reason. It's the same singer, but he's well, just dropping right. down to the bottom of his register. Right. And the melody that he's singing, he's talking about how his past is assaulting him. Um, in the beginning of this part, um, Forever says, I pity the men of swords. For, you know, blood runs red here or something like that. Yeah. Um, so he's talking about being assaulted by, you know, as he puts it, the women I've raped, the men I've slain. 
he's being revisited by their spirits. I kind of assumed he died here, but no, nope. That's later. Um, <laughs> he, he falls with the oldest trick in the book. Yeah. Um, but the melody he's singing kind of sounds like an old drinking song. Really? Uh, to I me, mean, it sounds familiar, like an old drinking Iron song. Iron Maiden out of this until you hit the flute. <laughs> yeah. Um, then we get this duet between the barbarian the uh, and knight. Um, and and the Roman. Um, where's the no? Uh, oh yeah, no. That my note is where's the Roman because it's the men of swords. The Roman doesn't factor into this one. Well, yeah. Why not? Um, I guess he's a he's soldier not, too. Yeah, I mean he's a man of swords. Um, it feels like he just picked these things at random and had no idea what these things were. Like. Maybe. Um, <laughs> I like but the trade off between the flute and the electric guitar and the solo. Um, I felt the vocals here got. He he got back a bit too Broadway. <laughs> yeah, we get another round with the barbarian knight overlapping. The contrast is nice because we get the low end of this barbarian's voice, who sounds very American, even though he's Dutch. Yeah, um, and the knight who is, like I said, doing a Robert Plant impression. Robert Plant. Yeah, I, I've checked out other Damien Wilson. He, he sang for a band called Threshold. He always sounds like Plant. Really? Because see, I he thought wasn't he wasn't specifically was... doing a Plant impression for this. I thought they were he was having them specifically do impressions like the barbarian Sammy Hagar, no. you know, the hippies Bowie or Sid Barrett at times. That could have been intentional, but but it, Damian Wilson always sounds like Robert Plant. Future man doing Rich Wright. No, and I've also heard um, other stuff for Edward Riker's. I love Edward Riker's voice. Um, the future man. Sang with a band called Kayak. Um, love his voice. He always I... sounds like that. I've heard the name of that band. I mean, how do you forget a name like yeah, a right. kayak for a band? <laughs> but I can't remember what they what they did. Very kind of Marillion-ish, um, yeah. early eighties prog. I'm sure it was something I heard back in the days of XM when they had um oh um oh, what was the name of the prog jam station that they had? Okay, I don't remember. I forget. I'd, I'd be impressed if they played kayak because kayak is Dutch and Dutch bands get no, nothing over here. They that. Before XM was bought by Sirius, mm -hmm. it was a serious musical station or, uh -huh. you know, platform mm -hmm. where they actually had a prog jam band channel. Vaguely I remember was, that. I think it was Area 51. I can't okay. remember now. Uh, it's it. They also had a punk, you know, station too, a real yeah. punk station okay. back then. These things all got taken away once they got bought out, though. But think... they would play things like Kayak and Camel and Marillion. And nice. They, yeah. they, wow. <laughs> And, of course, you know, you get Umphreys McGee in there, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a really good station to listen to. And then they got bought out. Yeah, I think I mostly, on, for the short time I did listen to it, I think I was mostly stuck to, like, Fred or Ethel, one of the, like, alternative channels. Um, uh, those were all right. But, yeah, mm -hmm. it was... I on to track the name of the station. <laughs> on to track eleven, Tower of Hope. Love the sort of fast, chirpy guitar that comes in on this one. Um, but this one does get very musical theater. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is the one that was very Pink Floyd. Like, but uh, I can imagine the dance number. <laughs> like like a division belt Pink Floyd. If I'm if I'm remembering the oh. right one. Well, I know it's the the future man is doing his solid rich right. Like this is the, we're climbing up the stairs, <laughs> you know. Yes, yes, the, the, that's right. Because it is a lot like something off the Division Bell, actually, which is only like four years before this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I all I know off the of Division, Division Bell is keep talking. Um, but yeah, this they're suddenly feeling hopeful, and you know they're climbing up this tower of hope, <laughs> only to realize that it's only an illusion. Um, I love the chorus is I only felt what I wanted to feel. I only saw what I wanted to see. Love that part. I mean, it is one of, it, it is like kind of the single from the album. I think if there if were a were single, release, probably. Yeah. If you were to release a single, it would be this yeah, one. Definitely. Yeah. Um, then it goes suddenly very jazzy. With yeah. This trade off synth and guitar solo. And this in this extended chorus. And then we get to a really interesting one. Cosmic fusion track 12. This is the Indian's death song. Um, she feel she thinks she can fly off the tower toward the sun for some reason. Oh, you know, I saw I, I saw her on the breeze. Okay. Um, 
and but and if the Roman and the future men try to tell her, you know, it's just an illusion, it'll just kill you. You know, she talks about how you know all these things are happening, and she soars on the breeze and on the breeze until the, into the sun. Um, love the sort of clean or the very clean arpeggio guitar. Um, and then, um, then death comes in. <laughs> yes, and if you thought every the other characters were on the nose. Death grunts for death, yeah. It's that section death is actually is... called Death's Grunt. Yeah. Yeah, I don't but, know if it's Lemmy or if it's Hetfield or no, if it's a Klingon. It's Klingon, because this is no Lemmy and Hetfield never went this 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 is straight up Death Grunt. Um, That's true. These guys are in death metal bands. Um But hearing those synth trumpets with a death grunt was weird. Um because it's not that heavy of a section. Also, why yeah. two why two people for death? I didn't even realize there were two people. Yeah, there are two. They divide the couplets. Um, but I loved um, the, her uh, Sharon Denadal's like, wordless vocal over the grunting when that part comes in, in, in the second part when they repeat it all, um, and a great scream at the end when she dies. And then the start three, the passing of an eagle, you get this really interesting synth bass. With this like kind of Wild West Peter Gunn kind of get very tall caster kind of <laughs> guitar part. Um, then the synths and the guitar kind of play this variation of the Future Man Rome, you know, Roman melody. And then a big synth solo that trades off with the guitar. <laughs> yeah, I like. The, I think this is what they do best here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this um, is prog metal right here. Yeah, yeah. And that's it's what they're... What what I bought a ticket for, <laughs> and then it's they, they they work into these great harmonized parts at the end. Um, track thirteen, the mirror maze, part one, inside the mirror maze. This is where the hippie actually talks about himself and how you know he he talks about his past. I I, I wasn't too much of a fan of the hippie when he was doing Bowie and Sid Barrett, but now he's the Eggman or the Walrus here. Yeah, this is very Beatles. Not yeah. quite as Beatles as he gets a little later, but <laughs> um, he's talking about how you know being neglected as a kid made him turn to drugs and long hair and all of this. Um, and then the 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 Freezer Man comes in on the chorus and talking about talking about you know how this is all a mirror, um, you know, uh, you know how we're all there are these hidden ghosts that we all try to hide in the mirror maze. Um, very on the nose. <laughs> Yeah, I like the second part though. It's yeah, a little because, repetitive, but I think it works. Um, well, if we we get this piano and electric guitar bit in between the two sections that really reminds me of the end of Rocky R. <laughs> oh yeah, that music. Yeah, you know, um, bad super, music the, under there. Don't lift that. <laughs> the break in superheroes, and I fucking love superheroes. Um, but yeah, it reminds me a lot of that. And then we get this heavy part with this great guitar and Hammond riff. And then, and the Roman and the knight facing their fears. Um, and the knights, you know, the knight's lines really kind of resonate with me. Um, but then they end up breaking through the mirror. And Wait, they does allow... The do hmm? something other than talk about Arthurian mythology? No, he does talk about, you know, overcoming fear at that point. Um, and then they allow their fear to pass over them and through them. Oh, I couldn't resist that. <laughs> <laughs> and they get to the next verse which is and then there's something about riding on the wings of time which doesn't hmm. fit anything else in the song <laughs> on to track 14 evil devolution one other one of my favorites this is the future man solo this would probably be i mean yeah actually yeah this probably should have been the single yeah it's probably it'd probably get my pick for strongest mm. Um, they break through the mirror, and the future man sees, literally sees the machine behind what they're being put through. And this kind of gets into a bit more of the mythology that you find out about in later records. Um, uh, Forever's race live underwater. They're, they rely on, and they're not aquatic beings. They, they rely on technology to survive. Yeah. That technology has made them mortal, but also stripped them of their emotions. Which is why they they run humans through this these courses to experience their emotions, um, which is explained a little the, later. The confusing part is though he says they've also been they've been observing him this whole time. 
Mm. So why why the need to observe them closely like this? I don't know. It's, it's <laughs> just a show. <laughs> Try to relax. Um, but you know they go through the mirror. The the uh, the future man sees the the inner workings of everything. Um, and I love the just absolutely dripping tremolo on the guitar on this one and how the timing changes. The verses are in four, the chorus is in five. Um, again, I, I absolutely adore Edward Baker's voice. I have some issues with the lyrics. It's very anti-technology, Luddite. Yeah. Um, you know, it practically goes but goes back to uh, the future's plain to see too much technology, machines to save our lives, machines dehumanize. Mr. Roboto sticks. Yeah. Got to reference but, I mean, sticks again. That shouldn't surprise you if he's his representation of humanity is mostly people from the classical and dark ages. That's just true. This is true. But this idea that technology—I mean, you there's certainly a case to be made that we're too reliant on technology. But this idea that it's going to strip us of our humanity—that's been you know this goes back to fucking Metropolis and probably yeah. before then—is um, just ridiculous. Yeah, but how is he supposed to get your porn? <laughs> yeah. Um, he doesn't discuss that in here. Hmm. Um, love how it starts off soft and then just explodes, though, with this great guitar solo. And then goes straight up 80s metal. <laughs> yeah, it's not a door. This great synth solo and this vintage analog sound. Um, and then the chorus is brought back heavy. And it ends with this sort of soft electronics kind of humming the dynamics on this album are amazing how just the louds and softs yeah on to track 15 the two gates this is where we lose the barbarian um, yeah, i thought he'd already died yeah. <laughs> i was kind of like wait what he's here the four survivors the hippie the future man the knight and no the far sorry five the knight the roman and the barbarian right um are there are four overall um, are presented with these two gates. One leads back to their own times. One leads to oblivion. One is really run down. One is gleaming and golden. Of course, the barbarian picks the golden gate. Yeah. Oh, also the oldest trick in the book. Right. Love how the it's got this kind of bouncy, insistent rhythm. Um, kind of starts electronic and mellow, then just kind of explodes. Um, we get as and it goes acoustic on the verses. He is um, full Sammy Hagar here. Yeah, and I love his low end. Um, and the chorus gets a bit musical theater, but I like it. Um, love the heavy riff between the verses and the Hammond coming in on verse two. And then at the end of chorus two, they go pure queen. Yes. Or should I say they go full queen? Um, <laughs> the harmonies are straight out of one vision on the line. Enter the gate to your destiny. It's, yeah. The harmonies are straight out of one vision. There's this harmonized lead guitar part. I don't know how, but Arian somehow managed to nail Brian May's guitar sound. <laughs> for those who don't know guitars, Brian May, for decades, has been playing the same guitar. Actually, I think it's a replica now. Um, the original was you know, kept at a vault. But it was made by him and his father when he was a kid. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh, completely homemade, and not just like they made a body and stuck aftermarket parts on it. Like all of the 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 mach all of the metal parts were machined, like taken from like you know, spare bits of metal. Um, the pickups they wound the pickups, everything like made all made entirely from scratch. That's crazy. Um, and he plays with a sixpence as a for a pick. So his tone. There, there are practically dissertations written on how to get his tone. And no one can pull it off because no one has his gear. So you, are you saying he doesn't use it anymore to play live? Well, I mean... Or do you it, think he... It was upgraded over the years, but, you know, it's all very custom still. Um, and I, I think, yeah, the ones he... he I don't know. Well, yeah, they still play live. Um the ones he's had yeah, probably since I, th I think he probably put the original into storage in the eighties to keep it safe because he had a couple of other companies who made just exact replicas of it, you know, because the original is priceless and it's made by his father and, you know, he doesn't want to take that out on the road, <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
Um, but his tone is ir- is not. You can't reproduce his tone per- perfectly because no one has that. Has, no one has those pickups. Um, so the fact that Aryan got so close to May's tone and that little lead guitar bit is amazing. Um, also love the echoes on the bridge when the oblivion when the the barbarian goes into oblivion. Oh, and, just the. <laughs> You know, why is it so dark? Where am I? Um, and this is where he mentions Valhalla, Valkyries, and Odin. You know, finally revealing that he's a bar- he's a, he's a Viking. Yeah. See, because when I see bar- when I first saw Barbarian, I'm thinking Hun. Um. Well, you know, they had a lot of Germanic tribes. Yeah, yeah. I just go Hun when I think Barbarian for whatever reason. Um. But yeah, Which, he's I mean. A- my point is, like, four of these guys could have all existed in the same time, yeah, pretty right, much, right, right. for pretty close to it. Uh-huh. But yeah, he really else is a Viking. Um, yeah. And the night is sounding especially uh, plant esque <laughs> when he asks <laughs> the forever why they were all put through it. Um, and then I just love the booming percussion in the last chorus. Um, on to track 16, Forever the Stars. This is where Forever explains who he is. It's done a lot like the uh, spoken word at the end of Sheep, which, if you think about it, the beginning of the album is like the the intro to Dogs. Mm -hmm. And now this is the end of Animals. Yeah. Um, And I'm not going to get into the whole story, um, but I love how as he's talking, his voice becomes more distorted and more electronic. This is where you really need the lyric sheet. Right. I'm not really sure what the point of the story is, honestly, after he explains it. Well, you know? I, it's, what, it's what I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, his race, has over because of their technological advances, have become robbed of their emotions. Yeah. And so they, they created humanity to experience our emotions vicariously. And then... For whatever reason, had to kidnap a bunch of people in their dreams, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, some cosmic hostile here. Yeah. Um, Although, and, did they really die at the end? I mean, that's what I'm wondering. Um, and, and first of all, I just want to mention before then, um, as he gets more electronic, he also gets more sung. Yeah. He almost kind of sings more, whereas it was all spoken before. Peter Daltrey is also a singer. He's in a prog band. I can't think of the name offhand. And um, the, the neat part was that it, it, it is in the same kind of, in, to, to the music of the intro. Yeah. He's kind of speaking these lines in, but he's not doing the the cold hearted orb, you know, thing <laughs> anymore. Yeah. Like he lost that somewhere mm-hmm. after the second or third thing, yeah, and did something else. Well, because forever got more sinister. Well, that's the weird thing for a group of people that have no emotions. He certainly has a lot of emotions. He does seem to show emotion at points. Yeah, yeah, um... that makes sense. It's like the knights who who say "ni," we're saying "suffice it to say" throughout the one scene. Yeah, <laughs> but they can't hear the word "it." On the track seventeen, <laughs> another time, another space. This is just the survivors dealing with the aftermath. The four who yeah. survived coming back to their lives. It does beg the question: if it was all a dream, and they never explicitly say that it was all a dream. I'm I'm getting that from I'm interpreting that from some of the lyrics. I would think so too, because they don't really justify the deaths you know yeah it's just did, like and then this person's gone and yeah, it's did like, the other what? four just wake up <laughs> yeah I, i'd like to think they did um but this is the, the hippie in the future man origin initially trying talking about you know trying to grapple with their missing memories and knowing something happened but they can't quite place it right that was the other thing about being the point because they're like told oh if you survive this you're going to have this rich reward kind of thing and it's like oh no you're not going to remember any of it no. Like, wait, what? Well, what, what's they, the point then? They're Damn just it. left with missing a sense of something happened and no memory. The Roman and the knight find themselves at peace. Yeah. Afterwards. They've dealt with their fear and they're they're at peace now. Um the men of swords find themselves at peace, which is surprising. Um and then the chorus is just incredibly Beatles. Yeah, yeah. This it's is a... where it goes full Beatles. Um, <laughs> and it's just a nice capper to the story. Um it is. And it's got this nice crying synth sound at the beginning that just gets even more melodramatic at the end during the instrumental break. 
we get these weird snippets of the story before the very ending. I don't quite understand. I've never it's, understood why we hear these like heavily delayed snippets of earlier vocals. It's like this uh, weird Quadrophenia style curtain call. Well, yeah, yeah. Quadrophenia, like the intro of Quadrophenia, they have different random lines right. from the story kind of dubbed into the intro mm -hmm. like you're like you won't know what this means but you will when it gets down right. to it but they kind of do that for the end yeah. kind of a curtain call one for each uh right character. each of the character yeah that might be that's exactly what it was maybe it was just a curtain call and yeah. at the very end he says you remember forever even though they don't remember a thing <laughs> well i mean i guess he's thinking they're they're doing a play on words there of remember yeah, yeah, him of course forever is him yeah and well forever that, isn't just him it's the race he's specifically forever of the stars oh okay um so remember them remember the creators yeah. and um yeah and i you kind of do get the sense that you know that they they have more wisdom and they're they're better equipped to get back to their lives the ones that at least did survive if yeah. they all didn't i don't yeah. know yeah I don't even if they did all wake up. The four who died all woke up. I don't. I don't think the Highlanders any better off. <laughs> so that's not exactly you... that's not exactly the Highlander that uh, <laughs> that I think they're taking the Highlander from. No, it's just random Highlander. It's not the Highlander. Um, I think it's fish, really. <laughs> yeah, um, and I, I, I just would like to give it our, give us both a pat on the back for restraining ourselves from referencing the movie until now. <laughs> so would you recommend it oh man i think this would make an amazing single album but i think it's just too ponderous as a double i think it falls into the same uh trap that elvis costello did um but if they had like cut this down with like maybe half the characters and and just focus some of this instrumentals you know that we have here that taking the best of it and like a 45 50 minute album would have been awesome but as an hour 44 no i can't recommend it i absolutely do recommend it though um until the weekend before the last time we recorded when we were originally going to re review it i hadn't listened to this album in years but as soon as i did i fell back in love with it parts of songs got stuck in my head it's a bit long <laughs> And it can be a bit challenging with the multiple singers, but I, I think it's worth the effort. I think it relies a lot on a story that isn't really quite baked. <laughs> it's a I bad think that's movie. The other it's problem. a B movie. Right. You know? Uh, and I think it kind of gets in the way of what, musically, what he's trying to do. Well, musically, it's just classic prog, mostly, with a little yeah. metal thrown in. And a little electronica. Um. And, the, you know, with regard to the story, because the actual line just finally popped into my head. Just repeat to yourself, it's just a show. You should really just relax. <laughs> All right. So until next time, we'll be reviewing Monolith of Phobos by the Claypool Lennon Delirium. Nice. I've been looking forward to reviewing them. I've only heard a few songs. I've only really, I mean, I've listened to the album, this one once or twice, mm -hmm. but I've listened more to uh, Lime and Limpid Green ep a lot more than right. than this um it's gonna be interesting because up until this my last memory of sean lennon is that cover that i i guess cover works of give peace a chance when he was like 12 um, yeah <laughs> i missed his entire <laughs> career as an actual musician until he worked with les claypool um turns out he's a decent guitar player um i had no idea um and and the two of them play everything on the album. Yeah. Which is fascinating. Anyway, that's next time. Until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are.